Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. We are really excited to have you participating in this event tonight. We've got some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Andy, and I'm going to be your facilitator. But before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on our website for more sessions. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and it will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Bard College at Simons Rock. Thank you, Andy. Let me just grab my presentation. Can everyone see my screen? I believe you can. Um, so welcome, my name is, good, thank you. My name is Michelle Chavez and I am the Director of Admissions for Bard College at Simons Rock. We are located uh, two hours away from New York and two hours away from Boston. So in Massachusetts, um, we have small class sizes. We're actually very particular in that we have about 400 students on campus. So if someone's looking for a really small uh, liberal arts college, this would be a great opportunity. 92% uh, um, academic ranking, 92 from Princeton Review. Um, and we also are really well known for our teaching and innovation in education. We are also a very LGBTQA friendly institution. Uh, we were founded back in 1966 by Elizabeth Blodgett, um, who believed that students um, could take college level coursework at an earlier age. And therefore we are the nation's first early college. Um, so what does that mean for you? If you're someone who is a genuine lover of education, loves to challenge ideas, um, is into unconventional um, thoughts and would like to build a better and smarter uh, world, then Simon's Rock uh, is for you. Um, so we are an early college. And what that means for students is that you have the opportunity to begin your uh, bachelor's degree uh, while you're in 11th or 12th grade. Some students choose to do this because they're maybe already interested in taking college level coursework and would rather complete high school earlier and begin college. Um, some students are with us and they begin their associates and then transfer out to some of the institutions listed here or others around the world or in the country. But um, we have students begin with us at the age of 16. Um, and so if you're someone who thinks they're ready for college at an earlier age, um, you're definitely welcome to join our community. We also have dual degree programs with different institutions. Uh, we have a Columbia um, University and Bard College at Simons Rock engineering program where students spend three years with us and two years at Columbia University and receive two bachelors. The same for Dartmouth. Um, we also have the Vermont Law School uh, dual degree. So if you're thinking of going into law, this is a great opportunity. One of our really popular programs Programs is the Upstate Medical uh, University program where students spend with us three years and then transfer over to the SUNY Upstate Medical Program and they do not have to take the MCAT. Um, we usually have five seats available for that program and in the past few years we've had about three students participate in that program. So definitely some unique opportunities. Um, we are very much a lively campus located in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. So behind me, you'll see the 275 acre campus, but within 15 minutes to 30 minute walk, we have a thriving downtown community with movies and theaters, restaurants, anything that you need to do so that you don't feel like you're too away or isolated. Um, we are part of the common application. Um, and so if you're interested in applying, you would just like many other institutions, submit your transcript. We do ask for two letters of recommendation, two essays, one a sample graded essay. And we look to interview students. As I mentioned, we are in early college. And what that means for you is that you're choosing 
to begin college two years ahead of your peers. Um, and therefore, we want to make sure that you understand what that means for you as you move on to your academic and professional journey. And then we have a parent statement and a school counselor recommendation if needed. We are uh, middle states accredited and therefore students can submit the FAFSA to receive both um, need-based aid. Um, we also provide merit scholarships, so students do not need to apply for um, through another application process. You're automatically considered at the point of review. And here is my contact information in case you have any questions. I know that I you know, really sped it up through this presentation, but I want to be mindful of everyone else. Um, I will definitely keep an eye on the chat if anyone's looking to ask any specific questions about Simon's Rock um, or Bard College at Simon's Rock. Thank you. All right. Thank you to Bard College at Simon's Rock. Uh, next up, we have Emerson College. Thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. All right, everybody, I am going to keep my eye on the time. Uh, my name is Amy Mitchell. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission for Emerson College. And we're going to just go through a little bit about Emerson tonight. So Emerson is right in the heart of downtown Boston. Um, we're actually in the theater district in Boston. I'm virtually sitting in one of Emerson's theaters right now. We have three theaters that look like this that were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s that we've revamped back to historical standards. So pretty great location right in the heart of the city. It is an urban campus, as you can probably tell. Um, but I always say it's the world's teeniest, tiniest urban campus. We have 12 buildings and a two block walking radius. So it literally takes maybe 10 minutes to walk the entire campus. Us. Um, so you get the best of both worlds with being that kind of small size, but still city. We have about 3,700 students, so really great size in that sense as well, and that you're still meeting some unfamiliar people, but most students you know. It's a 13 to 1 student to professor ratio. Class sizes will be small, about 20 students. Our uh, faculty are working professionals in their fields as well, so you'll really get a chance to engage and get to know them, do internships with them, all sorts of things. We have a pretty diverse student body, as you can see as well. It's really important to us that we're getting that wide range of student voices in the classroom. The place that we get the most students from is actually California. That's our largest state that we get students from. On our campus, we have five residence centers, and we do require that students live on campus the first three years. Our students are very spoiled by our incredibly nice residence centers, many that have gorgeous views of the Boston Commons. So as we move forward, we're gonna just skip this video that's gonna pop up and go into our liberal arts requirements. We are a school that cares deeply about students having a solid general education um, is a part of their time at Emerson. So all students will take a number of different liberal arts courses that are all designed so that you're looking at the sort of a lens through what you wanna major in. So for instance, in our science area, you can take a class called Politics of Water, which is all about uh, water as a commodity and what happens when you don't have access to clean water. So if you are a film student, you might make a documentary about Flint, Michigan and the tainted water supply there as your science class. Um, if you have three years of your of C or better, actually four years of C or better in your high school math, we will waive your quantitative reasoning class, which is your math class. If you have three levels of a foreign language, we will waive that requirement as well. We have based our majors across two schools. We have a school of communications and a school of arts. You can see we have a pretty wide variety of options in our School of Communication, everything from political communication, sports communication. We're ranked at the top journalism program in the country, very strong in business, marketing, quite a wide range. In our School of Arts, we are in the top six film schools in the country, incredibly well known for our theater program, creative writing, and then we also have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Comedy. We also have a program where students can actually create their own major and they can build across different disciplines, including some of the liberal arts to build their own major. So they will design it, work with faculty and then choose the name of that major. We have a number of these global programs where students will spend actually two years studying abroad and then come to Emerson. So we have two programs in conjunction with Franklin University in Switzerland, where students will spend their first two years at Franklin University earning an AA degree and then coming over to Emerson to finish out their program. We have that in our business program as well as an international and political communication program. 
We also have a three-year program um, in fine art films. It's a little bit different. This is film that is in more of the fine art realm. These students will spend three academic years studying at Paris College of Art, and they will spend their summers in Boston, and they'll spend one summer in our Netherlands campus as well. A really unique program to us. And then we also have a program where students will spend their first two years if they're interested in the business program, studying in Sydney, Australia, and then spend their last two years at Emerson. We have a number of unique minors as well, everything from a podcasting minor to peace and social justice, hearing and deafness, quite a wide range of opportunities for students' esports uh, that they can add to their program. We also have two other campuses. We have a campus right in the heart of Hollywood that we built about seven years ago. It is a beautiful building. Uh, students, there's room for 200 students to live in that building. They will take classes there and they will spend the bulk of their time doing a very intense internship that's designed to get them a job. And then we also own our own medieval castle in the Netherlands. So students can live in that castle for a semester, study in the, in the Netherlands, and then travel around Europe. Busy campus, uh, D3 in sports, lots of internships available as well. Some really cool alumni whose names and faces you probably recognize. And then we also are a Common App school. So the easiest way for students to apply is to use the Common App. Some of the majors will require some additional information, including a portfolio or audition. Uh, we do take the FAFSA as well as the CSS profile and offer automatic consideration for scholarships. And here are some deadlines to keep in mind. We are both early decision and early action. We also have a round two for early decision. And then we also have regular decision as an option. Uh, if you're applying early action or early decision round one, your deadline would be November 1st. You will hear back from us by about mid-December. So have until May 1st to make that decision and that's your early decision, which then your decision's already made. Um, and then also, of course, the same with early decision tool, you'll hear back mid-January and regular decision, you'll hear back mid-March. And those automatic scholarship consideration, those will be for scholarships that range from 5,000 all the way to 28,000 in academic year. So thanks so much. I'll pop my email in the chat and I'm going to pass it along to my next colleague now. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks to Emerson College. Next up, we have MCPHS University. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Give me just one quick second so I can go ahead and share my screen here and get this up for you guys so we can all look along. And uh, so Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, we are a health sciences based university. And what that means is every program that we have falls within the healthcare world. Often people mistake this just for simply being, uh, you know, with regard to patient care. Uh, it also spans out to a lot of different areas. It spans out to the research area. It spans out to academic development and how that uh, goes and builds and funnels into healthcare and, and its development. It expands out to the business side of things um, and really everything in between. So what that allows us to do is really have a holistic experience for all of our students that come through our programs to understand big picture healthcare, not just your specific role. It's, it's understanding your role plus the big picture and where it falls. So you're able to have really well uh, developed understanding of exactly what you're doing, not just in your daily work, but what it means in the grand scheme of things here. Um, these are all of our different programs. Um, I like to sort of highlight the different schools here just so students exact, uh, can understand sort of how it could be different because we do offer some programs that are accelerated. What we mean when we say accelerated is you're graduating that bachelor's degree program in a three-year period rather than a four-year period where you have two semesters during summers during those first two years. So anything that is dental hygiene related, so the School of Dental Hygiene, um, anything that is medical imaging related, so that top right corner, our School of Medical Imaging and Therapeutics, and nursing related, our School of Nursing, all of those programs are accelerated. So your first two years, you'll have three semesters or a year and a half of school in year one, a year and a half, a traditional year and a half of school in year two, and just a two semester year in year three. Now our School of Arts and Sciences, our School of Pharmacy, uh, and our School of Healthcare Business and our School of Rehabilitation Sciences, those are all traditional based programs where it's, you know, for a bachelor's degree, it's your traditional four year process, two semesters a year. 
Now, uh, like I said before, we really like to make sure it's a holistic experience for our students. Um, we go to the extent of really drilling down on an interprofessional education for our students. So for example, uh, a very common patient care team that you find in the real world are nurses, uh, uh, PAs or physician's assistants, and then also physicians. And we are really at a spoil of riches with our location, with us being in Boston, in the Longwood Medical Area, which is essentially the Disneyland of healthcare. Uh, right across the street from us is actually Harvard Medical. We actually share some faculty and resources with them, uh, including this interprofessional experience. So we actually have students from our nursing program, students from our PA program, partner with Harvard's medical students. We do case study work uh, inside the classroom. And then when they're on their clinical rotations, we try to partner them together so they have the safe experience of understanding how to manage a patient's care as a team in a safe space of a classroom, and then get to do it in person outside of the class as well. Not to mention, you have a plethora of different uh, clinical experience opportunities, and really a lot of other different things at your fingertips, literally right outside your door. We do have housing on campus. Our, when you combine all three of our campuses, we also have a Worcester, Massachusetts and Manchester, New Hampshire campus. We're at about 7,000 students in total. Just the undergraduate population on the Boston campus, which is where all students begin if they start with us from day one as a freshman, um, we're only about 3,800 students on that Boston campus at the undergraduate level. Um, when, it's all, when it all is said and done, all of these different experiences really add up for our students to uh, really earn well after they graduate. Most of them have jobs waiting for them, and it's simply a matter of them passing board exams after they graduate. A lot of them go through interviews during that senior year, or they're setting up interviews from those clinical experiences, from the different research opportunities they get while they're in school with us. Um, and it really helps them with those next steps of figuring out, well, you know, I'm getting this great degree and I want to figure out exactly where I'm going to work, not just what I'm going to do. Because a lot of our students tend to be a little bit more mature and tend to be a little bit more professionally focused. So they tend to know exactly what they want to do, but it's a matter of where they want to go with it, whether that's, you know, at, at a more prestigious uh, hospital like a Boston Children's or, or you know, uh, a Beth Israel or Brigham and Women or a Mass General, um, all of which we have clinical affiliations with or if they're trying to go more into the public sector and work in public health clinics, which we have a lot of connections there as well. Um, this is some other important information that I encourage students, if you have a uh, screenshot capability or if you could take a picture of this, um, we are test optional. We do not require an SAT or ACT for any programs. Um, our early action uh, priorities are non-binding, meaning that you're not committed to go here if you apply early action. I will say some programs do fill up, so it's important I really stress students to apply on an early action basis. So you can find out, you know, if you're in as soon as before winter break rolls around. And we only use the FAFSA. We do not use CSS profile. So uh, if you are interested in financial aid uh, assistance, uh, certainly use the FAFSA. Uh, those open up on October 1st. If you have that done by say Thanksgiving, that way by mid-January, you know exactly if you're in your program, you know what cost is gonna fall at and you have the spring to really figure out if we're gonna be the best fit for you. Um, now, uh, all contact information is the bottom right page here. My name is Luke Wilson. I'm actually call, covering for our counselor that works with all of our California students. His name is Alan Bodwin. I strongly encourage you to get in touch with him because, because he actually lives out there. He's remote with us. So um, I know he sets up meetings with folks from time to time. So certainly take full advantage, get to know Alan. Um, he is a plethora of knowledge about us. I actually bug him often when I have questions. Uh, and that's my time. I want to pass it back over to Andy. Andy, feel free to get the next person going here. All right. Thank you so much to MCPHS. And next up, we have Merrimack College. Hello, everyone. Um, I apologize, it's a little loud behind me. I'm actually in a Starbucks in San Jose, of all places, so very appropriate for this evening. Um, but my name is Christine Carroll with Merrimack College. We are located in North Andover, Massachusetts. Um, so we're only about 25, 30 minutes outside of Boston. So it's that nice balance between, you know, having the access to the city for internship opportunities, networking, jobs, all the fun stuff that's in the city, but still very much having that campus feeling. You can see um, an aerial shot of our school here. Uh, we're very much a residential college. So uh, majority of our students, 70% live on our campus. We guarantee housing all four years. Uh, about 4,000 undergrad and about 1,200 grad students and growing. So we've had a lot of forward momentum, a lot of really exciting things happening on campus. 
We have over 100 different academic programs in various areas, um, over 60 different student clubs and organizations, as well as Division I athletics. We're really excited to see athletics back um, on campus this year. Um, our average class size is 22, and it's a 15 to 1 student faculty ratio. So I think something that's really important to realize is the academic experience here at Merrimack is all about being hands-on in, in the classroom. It's knowing your professors. We even have, you know, freshmen sometimes doing research with professors. We've had students go to conferences, present on, on their work, and publish on papers. Um, and I think that is the advantage of being in that more tight-knit community is you have a lot more access to these opportunities. Here are our five different academic schools. So our Gerard School of Business is our largest program. We recently added entrepreneurship and hospitality, our School of Education and Social Policy. We have our School of Liberal Arts, which includes our Discover program for undeclared students, because uh, that is actually one of our most popular majors is coming in undeclared. Um, we also have our School of Health Sciences, which includes our three plus two direct entry masters in athletic training, as well as our direct entry nursing program. Uh, and then we have our School of Science and Engineering. That's home to our newer uh, data science, neuroscience, and environmental and st uh, studies and sustainability programs. Um, and whether you know exactly what you want to do and you want to hit the ground running right away, or you need a little extra time to figure that out, you can come in either way. You don't have to declare a major right away, with the exception of nursing. Um, so it does give you a little more time to kind of breathe, explore, and think it through. Uh, and one of the ways we help you do that is through our wraparound academic support services. So whether it's, you know, academic support in the terms of tutoring, uh, helping with, you know, math, science, homework, um, or it's our mentorship program. So when every student comes to Merrimack, they have their access to their three advisors who will stay with them throughout their four years uh, at Merrimack. So it's your academic advisor who is going to help you guide through all things, choosing courses, you know, understanding your major. Every student gets a career advisor who you will actually start meeting with freshman year. Uh, career advising happens early and often at Merrimack. And then you'll have your academic success coach. And this is someone who really is kind of like a mentor or like that I can help you anywhere from where's the bookstore to how do I change a class to where do I find you know resources they can again really be that guide for you uh, I mentioned our career advisor so uh, that model is really built within the academic school so if you're an engineering student you'll, you'll have a career advisor within the school of science and engineering if you're a business student within the school of business and so they really specialize in those areas and can really make sure that you're you know finding a job finding an internship as long as you're working with that career advisor we do guarantee that you will get and an internship experience. We really work hard to make those opportunities available for our students. Um, these are some of the places where we've had both alumni and students interning. So again, a great access within the Boston area, but we have students going all over. We've had students do internships even out here uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, we've had students go down to Florida, you know, New York City. So that's why that career advisor is so important because they can really help you through this process and you don't feel like you have to go in alone. Um, even 10 years out from graduation, um, our uh, students and our alumni are, are really doing really well. Um, there was just a recent uh, survey, research, research out of Georgetown University that looked at the career projections and salaries for 4,500 different colleges across the country, and Merrimack ranked within the top 200 nationally, so we we're really excited about that. Uh, in terms of our application process, we are on the common application. Uh, there is no fee to apply, so it's a free application. Um, and we are test blind, so we do not require test scores, and that includes for our nursing program. So uh, you can you know, not have to worry about that test, uh, test stress. Uh, in terms of what we're looking for in our applicants, our average GPA is about a 3.3, so about a B. We do use a weighted GPA, so if you're taking any honors, AP classes, uh, and similar to my colleagues, we are looking very holistically at you as a whole person. So what are you involved in? What kind of other things are you doing? Reading your essay, getting to know you as a person, uh, it's so much more than just your academic journey. It's all how all of that fits together. So we really look at that when we're working with our students. Uh, we offer a couple different deadlines. We have our early action, one deadline, which is non-binding in November. Those students here back in December. We have an early action too. If you just want a little extra time, that's January. And then after that, our students um, are able to kind of do a rolling application from there. So really it's about what application deadline works for you versus feeling like you have to pick one or the other. So we want this process to be um, stress-free for you uh, as much as least it can uh, for the application process. 
Um, and I am the counselor who works with all of our students in Northern California, my colleague Jacob Schwartz, which works with all of our students in Southern California, and I work also with the Pacific Northwest. So if you have any questions or need anything, please reach out. I am here in the Bay Area if anyone needs anything. Uh, my colleague Jacob will be in Southern California in October, and I will also be heading in October to the Northwest. So I hope to see you all soon. Have a great one. Thanks. All right, thank you to Merrimack College. And next up we have Wentworth Institute of Technology. All right, hi everyone. I will get started sharing my screen. Okay, so um, we, uh, I'm here from Wentworth Institute of Technology. I am your specific uh, kind of point of contact throughout the time uh, applying to Wentworth. So if you do ever have questions, I will share my contact info at the end of this, but I am going to be the person working most closely with you. To get started, Wentworth is a small institution located right in Boston. We have about 4,500 students total. It's about 43, 4,400 undergraduate students total. Um, from there, you can see a couple different breakdowns of our student populations. Um, we do have 6% of our students are coming from international um, backgrounds. That's about 70 different countries um, that our students are coming from. We also are rather, like I said, smaller institution with about 4,400 students. We have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So our students are getting to know their professors. You can see your average class size is about 18 here at Wentworth. So again, our students are getting to know their professors, they are staying engaged with their professors, whether that's asking questions during class or after class, going to office hours, anything like that. Our students are definitely finding any type of support that they might need because of that small class size. We also just like to note that 100% of our classes are taught by faculty members. Um, I know sometimes that seems maybe a little obvious that you would expect your faculty members to be teaching. However, um, some schools might use graduate assistants or things like that. Our students are not being taught by grad students or teaching assistants, they are being taught 100% by their faculty members. Our programs at Wentworth are divided into five different schools and we currently offer 20 different programs. So first we have our School of Architecture and Design. This would house our architecture major, our interior design and our industrial design program. I will note that our architecture is also our longest standing four plus one program. So for anyone who is interested in architecture, it's important to keep in mind, I know a master's degree seems far down the line, but it is important to keep in mind that architecture licensures do require a master's degree. So it's something to kind of plan for when you're looking at an architecture field. And it's definitely a benefit to complete your master's in one year as opposed to two or three years. We have our School of Computing and Data Science. So this is home to computer science, cybersecurity, computer networking, and our applied mathematics major. We have our School of Engineering, which houses eight different disciplines of engineering, biological, biomedical, civil, computer. Um, and then we also have electrical, electromechanical, mechanical. And then we also have a major that is just engineering. So if you aren't really sure which of those disciplines I just rattled off might interest you most, it is nice that you can have that just engineering major. Some students go on to add minors to that or concentrations, but it is nice that you can come in um, just kind of starting in a general education program um, within engineering and getting those engineering basics and then choosing to either move between those disciplines or stay with that program the whole time. We have our School of Management. This was is our business management, our computer information systems, and then also construction management. And then lastly, we have our School of Science and Humanities. This houses applied sciences and then also our newest program, which is Computer Science and Society. It is a dual computer science program that also partners more with the humanity side of things. And our students are actually focusing a lot of their time on how to apply computer science into societal problems. So if you are interested in that type of field, it's definitely new and up and coming. Um, so I'm happy to talk more with you all about any of those programs if you did have more specific questions. Probably the biggest and most important takeaway about Wentworth is our co-op program. So if you're not familiar with a co-op, it is pretty similar to an internship. Here at Wentworth, our students are required to complete two full semesters of this. So it is not something just a handful of our students do. If they are graduating from Wentworth, they have completed two full semesters of co-op. When students go out on co-op, they are working a full-time job, 32 to 40 hours a week directly in their field. They have to be gaining a really relatable experience to their program and to their um, respective career fields. We don't let them pick jobs that are going to be busy work. And it's pretty rare that we let them accept an uh, unpaid position. So 
for almost all students. It also is a paid job that they are getting. Our students don't take classes and they don't pay tuition when they are on co-op. We also don't geographically limit our students. We are biased to Boston and we think it's a really phenomenal professional opportunity to take advantage of the jobs that are in Boston. It's a really tech focused and design focused city. But if you get a job out in, on the West Coast closer to home, or if you get you know, your dream company out in Chicago offers you a position, our students are definitely traveling all over the country doing these co-op positions. And then you can also see that is directly impacting their uh, career outcomes. So 96% of our students are hired upon graduation or attending grad school. Um, we are constantly ranked really strongly in this career preparation idea because of this co-op uh, program that we have here. And just so you know when those are happening, they would happen in the spring of your junior year and the fall of your senior year. And you can see you are still taking the kind of same number of semesters of classes and you're just rearranging them. Our students are graduating with a minimum of eight to 10 months of full-time paid work experience. So if you take anything out of remembering of Wentworth's academic program, the co-op is definitely the most important element that our students are engaged with. And then of course, I mentioned this and some of my colleagues already today have mentioned some of the great benefits of going to school in Boston. We have a 31 acre campus right here in the city. There are 35 colleges and universities directly in uh, the city of Boston. There are a ton even in the greater kind of more expanded area right outside of Boston. So it really is a college town for our students. And then just lastly, I wanted to leave you with the deadlines. So we have early action round one on the 15th of November. Um, and you can kind of see the other dates that fall in line there. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I am your direct contact. So if you have any questions, I will put my information in the chat below. Please reach out to me. I will be out on the West Coast. All right. Thank you so much to Wentworth Institute of Technology. And next up, we have the University of New Hampshire. All right. Sound good. Hi, everyone. My name is Nian Quach, and I am your admission counselor from the University of New Hampshire. So UNH is a flagship public tier one research university for the state of New Hampshire. And of course, there are so many reasons why West Coast students choose to attend UNH. But for tonight, I want to highlight the top three for you. And they are our academics, our communities, and of course, student outcome. I'll start by talking a little about our academics. So as you can see, UNH offer over a hundred different majors for students to choose from. And one of the things that distinguish UNH and its learning experience is our focus on research. Um, so regardless of the student major, you are encouraged. And I think more importantly, have the opportunity to do research during your four years with us. And at UNH, you do so at a top tier research institution, okay? We're one of just 20 land, sea, and space grant university in the country, and one of just three public tier one research university in New England. Um, and here are the five colleges within the University of New Hampshire. All the program at UNH are direct entry, including nursing, our engineering program, computer science, as well as business. We also have unique programs such as equine studies and popular program um, such as marine biology. Um, all of our program are test optional and none of them are impacted. That's pretty important for folks from um, especially California. Now we have over 50 different research centers and institute, um, and I would like to highlight a few of them for you. So you can see here's the image of our interoperability lab or IOL at UNH, which is one of the world leading testing facilities for data and networking products. It's employed many of our current undergraduate students, especially those in computer science as well as engineering. This is also where the first Apple iPhone was tested by our very, by our very own UNH student uh, before being released to the market. As an iPhone user, I thought that was super cool. Um, and then of course our research go beyond the STEM field, okay? Here are some images of exercise science lab or organic dairy research farm, AKA amazing ice cream on campus. Of course, there are also amazing facility available to our liberal arts student, um, such as the Center for Research on Child Development. 
The second aspect of UNH that I would like to highlight for you is our community. So we currently have around 13,000 undergraduate students and 15,000 overall. This means that we are big enough to offer you all the resources, the opportunity, division one athletics, school spirit, while still being able to maintain a more intimate and personal connection to your faculty as well as your classmates. Our students also embrace all the opportunity that our location, our residential campus, and our sites offer them. Um, so our students are guaranteed housing for four years, and the vast majority, 96 to be exact, live on our Durham campus, which has a very classic New England college feel, and 27 different resident hall, and three award-winning dining halls throughout our campus. And if you are wondering what people in New Hampshire do, uh, well, you know what people do in New Hampshire, well, no worries, I got you. Our students actually keep very busy on and off campus throughout the week as well as on the weekend. So from going to, you know, Division One athletics event to participating um, in our 250 different student club or exploring the area, areas around campus, there's always, always something to do. And our location is actually a really big draw for students as it's offer um, you a lot of opportunities. We are an hour north of Boston, an hour and a half from the majestic White Mountain, and then a short 20 minute from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, as you can see, we are literally in the middle of everywhere. And with the largest transportation system in the state, our Durham campus is actually very easy to get to. There are direct flight daily from all the major airport in California to Boston. And since we are only an hour north of Boston, there um, you can just take the uh, bus or Amtrak train, which stop right on campus. So again, very easy access to and from um, Durham to Boston. And then the third aspect of UNH that I want to highlight for you is our student outcome, okay? You can see that overall, the vast majority of our graduates reported that they were employed or in graduate school, medical school, vet school, law school, and so on. And if they are working, the majority reported that their job is related to their major area of study at UNH. And I think these results really speak to the value of uh, a UNH education. Lastly, we are common app school. Our early action is November 15 and regular decision deadline is February 1st. Again, test optional. I also want to highlight that we provide quite a bit of financial support to our incoming student in the form of need Bay A's as well as merit scholarship. And I would like to wrap up with the story of Charlie Nisham, who graduated from UNH back in May of 2020. Um, now, not only is he a UNH Wildcat, he is also one of SpaceX engineers. One of my favorite part um, of Charlie's story was his quote on how life is about the moment. One of the big moments for Charlie was deciding to major in mechanical engineering with a focus in aerospace at UNH. And then the other big moment was being a part of UNH robotic team and then meeting Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, uh, when the team was competing at a national competition. Uh, so with that, whatever the moment will be for you, I hope that UNH will, get, uh, will help you prepare for it. Anyway, thank you for your time today. Uh, here is my contact information and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. All right, thank you so much to the University of New Hampshire. And that was actually our last presenter for today, but we still have a few minutes left. So I'd like to ask all of our uh, presenters to go ahead and turn their cameras back on and we'll do just a little Q&A session here. So I've got some questions that I like to ask and I like all of them to, to kind of provide some uh, insight into these questions. So the first question would be, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start with Bard College, which is Simon's Rock. Thanks, Andy. I would say to not be shy and really reach out to your admissions counselor. I think everyone here encouraged you to connect with them and you should definitely do so. Do not feel like any question you ask is going to be judged or, you know, that is silly. Um, this is what we are supposed to do is to assist you with this process. We know it's overwhelming and there's, you know, a lot of different requirements. As you can see, just by all the schools here today, we're all slightly different and have different requirements. So really be an advocate for yourself and reach out to us. We love to hear from you. Um, and I think that's, that's one of my advice. 
I can pop in next. Um, so, I, you know, I always go back and forth on this this question. I think that probably the thing I think is most important is to learn to listen to your own instincts. Um, I think that they will guide you. I think it's really easy in the process to hear voices coming from all around you and opinions coming from all around you. Um, you know, somebody that thinks you should apply here, even if you know it's not a good fit because of the name or who knows what. Um, and I think it's really important to just listen to your own instincts. You, you, you know, when you hear us talk about fit, I think a lot of that is very instinctual. So listen to yourself um, and, and, you know, don't get swayed by all the voices around you. I, I'd like to build on that, actually, because I, I was going to say something similar. Fit really is something that's huge. Um, we're all excellent schools here. You know, you don't have a wrong pick. If you are very interested in, in uh, engineering and design, like Wentworth is an excellent, excellent school. If you're extremely interested in, uh, you know, marine bio, that's what my wife initially went to school for at UNH. You know, so there aren't really any wrong choices here. The right choice is really, you know, to, uh, to Amy's point, uh, it's for you to make, and it's making sure that things make sense for you and, and your inner voice, as she put it, you know? Um, but part of that is also taking the time to not only talk to your counselors, uh, but also take the time to understand, you know, the, the school itself and their own particular uh, campus culture, their student body. Um, so really, when you get an opportunity to talk to any students on a campus, whether they be tour guides or anybody else, like pick their brain. It's okay to ask them difficult questions. Um, and on top of that, make sure you take time to talk to your faculty because those are the people that you're going to be learning from. You want to make sure you like them just as much as, as your peers. So that's my big point that I really like to, to stress to students. Uh, so I think the number one thing I always like to stress is try to enjoy this experience. Uh, you know, for those of you who are seniors or when you are going to be a senior, especially, you know, after everything we've all been through, enjoy your senior year, embrace it, have a great time. Um, this is such a special moment in your life. And I know the college process can be really stressful. It's, you know, has a lot of anxiety around it. And that's totally understandable. But don't try to lose sight that this is a really exciting moment for you. Um, and, you know, if you just take it in little bits, uh, you'll be okay, you'll get through it. Um, but again, I don't want you to miss out on the rest of your senior year because this process has, has become all consuming. So definitely slow down, breathe. Um, everyone ultimately will end up where they're meant to be. Um, and if you just trust in the process, work with us, we'll help get you through it. But make sure to enjoy your senior year and enjoy this journey because it, it is a really special time. I would add in too, when you're, you're completing your application, I think we really all want you to be your authentic self. Um, don't think that we are looking for, you know, only people who participate in a certain club or, you know, if you're not volunteering on your weekends, don't feel that you need to lie and say that you're doing that. Like if you're watching your siblings for your parents instead, or you're working your part-time job, don't think that we value any of those things less than others. Some students can dedicate themselves to clubs. Some students you know, gaming's your thing and that's totally fine. So don't think that we value, you know, any types of personality traits or extracurriculars over the others. We really want to get to know you in the process. I don't want everyone to be the same at Wentworth. That's not what I'm looking for in a student body. I think everyone on the screen might say that they, they want, you know, different types of students at their schools. Um, be really boring if we only had one type of student at our school. So really do be your authentic self. Don't think that you need to hide like a passion or an interest from us because we want to get to know you. We want to get to know our students at our schools. I love all this advice. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit more technical. I was encouraged to keep in mind that everything take longer than you think it does. Um, I think every year we got the student panicking because um, they wait until the last minute to submit the common app and the website crash. Uh, so just, you know, make sure you give yourself plenty of time uh, to submit that as application, to ask your, you know, counselor, your teacher to write your letter recommendation, whatever it is that you're, you know, doing, just make sure that you give yourself extra time. It's called buffer. Um, it's very important. It's always help you become less stressed, enjoy the process more. Um, so yeah, always things always take longer than you think it will. Um, so give yourself the extra time would be my advice. Great. Thank you. Lots of really good advice there. Um, and actually, I think we're going to have to end it there because we are out of time now. So I do want to say thank you so much to all of our panelists today for sharing 
uh, things about their institution. Also, thank all of you for joining us today. When you close this window, there is going to be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We also encourage you to check back uh, to the schedule and sign up for more sessions because there is one more session tonight. And lastly, uh, again, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Thanks again and have a good rest of the evening. evening.